Not if folks will at our workshop. Cruising through Africa in a 2006 rest of the world spec 300 TDI Defender. Amazing scenery whizzing past you. Interesting smells blasting through open windows. Well, that was my perspective as a passenger on the second leg of this journey. In reality, I'd been the driver on the first leg and it was an utterly different perspective compared to the oblivious perspective that is gifted to passengers. We were going on a three-day trip into the bush and had been allocated this Defender from the fleet. It had fairly high mileage. That translates to about 230,000 miles, but I didn't care because it was a Defender and not one of those quiet, easy, clean, smooth driving Land Cruisers. 11,000 kilometers on this Land Cruiser. Still got a new car smell. Can you believe that? It's amazing. Yeah. Normally this stuff gets scratched up. This was a Defender. An adventure was calling. Sounded all right when I first ran it, although it became quickly quite apparent what its quirks were that it had picked up over the last 15 years. The pedals were slightly wobbly. The brake fluid level connectors were missing. There were other bits missing from the engine bay. There was a cracked windscreen, but there's no problem, I could still see. There was a whine from the transmission, and I was thinking, well, probably had the wine on the last journey as well so it's not going to fail straight away it's usually when noises appear that didn't exist very shortly prior to that that uh, you have to start worrying it had black smoke uphill which is not uncommon but uh, it did have a lot of black smoke when the engine was being labored though which is not that normal blue smoke when pulling away that's mm, that's not so good maybe turbo oil seals blue smoke downhill on overrun yeah that's uh, yeah that's not so great either that's probably the valve stem seals it seemed to cut out every now and then, so when you were under high fuel flow loads, like going up hills with turbo, the engine would sort of just lose power for a second or a millisecond and then and then cut back in. I was assuming that it would, you know dirt in the fuel tank, something like that. And the one that I was paying particular attention to was the temperature gauge never appeared to move into the running temperature position, which would be slightly left of vertical. You can see here that We've been running for about 95 kilometers on the tripometer. We're going about 80 kilometers an hour. And this thing is just above cool. Now, it's normally the case that a gauge would fail completely open or completely closed. Now, the gauge either wouldn't work at all or the gauge would completely be at full, at high on the, on the gauge. It's not that normal that you get an erroneous reading. So assuming the reading is correct, what could be going into this? The other thing I was thinking is there's no thermostat in this engine. So essentially the thermostat is designed part of the engine coolant system to keep the engine running at operating temperature. It stops it being overcooled, i.e. it closes and stops when it thinks it's being cooled too much, the, the thermostat closes, stops coolant going to the radiator. We were driving at ambient temperatures in the low 20 degrees Celsius, so that was my suspicion. There's no thermostat in the engine. I've never seen this before in another vehicle. Leave a comment below about what you think could be leading to the cause of this temperature gauge not reading correctly. Anyway, we carried on our journey, potholes and all, slightly weary when we arrived after 300 kilometres, but a good night's sleep made us right in preparation for what was to follow. The next morning, we jumped into the vehicle, eager to get going, turned the key, and nothing. The dash lights came on, but when you turned the key to the start position, it did nothing. No sound. I was the driver this morning, I felt a responsibility to try and solve it. At this point, I also had to try and remember my 300 CDI starting problems video that I made a few years ago. It'd be slightly embarrassing if I wasn't able to rectify this. I wondered at first if it was the starter motor that uh, the solenoid and the starter motor not kicking in. So I gave it a whack with some wood and, it, and that didn't make a difference. But when I, w I tried several times, you know, with the key and I couldn't hear a relay clicking either. The vehicle worked yesterday faultlessly. It started several times. So why not today? So, well, that probably means that we've got an intermittent fault that's happening at random with no direct causality. Uh, luckily for me, I know the wiring layout on the rest of the world 300 TDI quite well. And the fuse box under the right-hand seat takes positive feed directly from the battery. The relay is not even engaging. The positive feed has probably got something to do with it. It's not getting power at all. So looking at the battery box seemed like a good place to start. This cable runs from the battery box directly under the seat box into the fuse box. And lo and behold, we see fraying wires. Doesn't look great, did that? I fiddled around a bit, and then this happened. Uh. Uh. 
worked. What did you do? I played around with the battery a bit. What did the battery? I don't know, maybe. So, problem solved. Feeling quite chuffed with yourself. We got the vehicle to the workshop and they had a look at the wiring. And I thought it particularly pertinent to carry out vehicle checks on this morning compared to any other morning. Although they are fleet policy anyway, I will do them. But as we will find out, they do exist for a reason. On there, the lift pump. Just while we check oil. One of those moments where you you kind of need to do a double take, or the thing is coming. My first thought was the dipstick tube was coming out, it worked its way out of the engine block so that the stick wasn't reaching the oil. This used to happen on 200 TDIs, um, not necessarily 300 TDIs, but I thought it was worth a check. But I didn't, didn't look out of place. The next stick I'm looking for is serious leaks around the engine, but I couldn't see any. I, I had to check the oil again because I just couldn't believe it. And at this point I realised we'd been given an absolute lemon. I asked the mechanic if he could put some oil in. How many litres did he put in, folks? The 300 TDI takes six and a half litres on a wet fill, and that's with a filter change. Did he put in one? No. Two? No. Three? No. Four? No. Five? Nope. Five and a half litres on a six and a half litre fill. I hate to say it, but we were not that far away from destroying this engine. Maybe another 50 to 100 kilometres, and I think this would have done it. Now you can point at the dipstick as proof and say, well, not the one in the engine bay, I mean the one in the driver's seat and say, what the hell were you doing? Well, I think most people in this situation, if you were given a vehicle to use that had been in regular use and that when you first got the vehicle, it had a full engine oil level, I think you would expect to be able to drive it in one go for 300 kilometers or 190 miles. I think that's a reasonable expectation to have as a driver. So <laughs> let me know in the comments if you think I'm barking up the wrong tree. All that being said, we've got a poorly defender with multiple faults. We're 100 kilometers from our origin. What do you do? Well, there's only one thing you can do. Get the tires dirty and go camping in the bush, albeit in tandem with a Land Cruiser. The mechanic had given us some extra engine oil to take along, so at least that solved that one. The rest of the niggles we can live with. Camp that night I give the vehicle a good going over as we weren't even halfway on a return journey yet. Picked out a few more things that I found quite curious. The rear side windows were made of PVC and held in with silicon. The side door frame had a strangely battered appearance. The chassis, as usual for this part of the world, was immaculate. I checked the engine oil again and it was down. A rough calculation told me that we'd probably have enough spare oil in the vehicle to get us home. The next morning was a misty one as we made our way to the tarmac. As is the custom in this part of the world, the hazard lights came out as you see tuk-tuks and motorbikes emerging from the mist. You can always guarantee that the morning mist will burn away in the tropics. And this morning is no exception. The morning sun is starting to break through and suddenly it disappears as we emerge into the most gorgeous morning scenery. We 
made a quick trip to a nearby village where basically you end up driving through people's front yards and then it was back to the road. A few hours of driving later, it's time for a pit stop and to give the old girl a thirsty drink. Yeah, so that was less than 100 kilometres and it's gone from just above the top to near the bottom. Better put some more in. There we got a litre and a half. And it's a litre from low mark to high mark, so we might as well just put the whole lot in. I was very curious about where the oil was going other than out of the exhaust pipe. Losing oil at that rate without an obvious sign I can only attribute to a rear crankshaft oil seal. The transfer box didn't look that great either but under the engine was pretty clear after about 20 minutes of sitting. Granted it will need the engine running for oil to be coming out but at least there should have been some residual oil sitting in the bell housing that would have drained out in that time. But anyway I knew it wouldn't be our problem for much longer as we carried on through the amazing landscape with our Defender gliding us gracefully as it could to our destination. Naturally with a quick pit stop to fill up on fruit and veg, when we'd get back we'd hand it over to the workshop with a list of faults and it'd be up to them to rectify the problem of the loss of oil. Have you seen engine oil being lost or burnt as quickly as on this vehicle? Leave a comment below and subscribe for more videos of my escapades in Defenders in Africa. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.